Hello everybody, so let's talk about area bounded by two polar curves. So we talked briefly about the area inside of a polar curve, and it's one half the integral from alpha to beta of r of theta squared with respect to theta. Um, and we're going to do several problems where area is bounded by two curves. And depending on the problem, the setup of each of the problems might be slightly different. I'll explain what I mean when I get there. The big idea is whenever you're trying to think about area between two curves, you always have to think about how the area is being swept out in order to know how to set up your integral. So let's look at this first problem. We're going to find the area of the region common to the polar curve r equals 4 cosine theta and r equals 2 sine theta. And I went ahead and graphed those for you. You can graph those in your calculator in polar mode. You can ask me about that later if you need to. So my idea here is I want to think about what happens as I sweep out an angle. So if I start at angle 0 and I start sweeping out, you see when I start sweeping out here, the thing that's defining the outside edge is the red graph, 2 sine theta, until I hit right here where the two curves intersect. Let me see if I can make that any bigger. I cannot, yeah, there we go. So whatever that intersection point is, that's gonna be where it stops being defined by just the red circle. Once I get past that point, everything I sweep out is going to be defined by the blue circle until the blue circle hits the origin. So what I need to do first is I need to find the intersection between these two graphs. So I'm going to use my calculator to do that and I'm going to do this several times over the course of the video. I'm just going to pause the video and do the thing in the calculator and then come back with the value. So I found the intersection between those two happens when theta is about 1.107. So I would store that in my calculator as A, or I might even just like mark it on my paper as A, so I can set up these integrals without having to write that number every time. So, so my first integral will start with a sign. So when the angle was zero, I'm inside that red graph. And that's true until I get to the value of a. That's going to be inside the red graph, which is 2 sine theta. And then after that, with the green, I'm adding the area that starts at a and goes to where the blue graph intersects the pole. So if you think about where 4 cosine of theta would equal 0, that's where cosine of theta would equal 0, that's what happens at pi over 2. And then that would be inside this graph. And then I could use my calculator to calculate that. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to be interested in setting up the integrals. Okay, so now we're going to look at the second problem. So let me get my zoom out here. There we go. Well, I know I want the region of the, the area of the region common to the two graphs. So that would be this little region right in here. Now, you can tell that there's some intersection stuff going on. But again, we need to think about how the area is swept out. So. The first thing we'll do is go ahead and find where those two graphs intersect so we know what angle values those happen at. So I would set those equal to each other. And that happens when sine equals zero. So theta would be zero and pi. So this intersects at zero and this intersects at pi. If I were to plug those into either r equals 2 or 2 minus 2 sine theta, I would get the appropriate landing spot for each of those. Now, if I start at 0 and start sweeping out an angle to pi, my, ang my sweeping, I'm going to zoom in on this again, my sweeping would start at 0. Let me change colors there. And as the angle grows, you notice I'm still inside just the blue graph, right? Until I hit the pole, 
by the way, if I were to set that two minus two cos sorry, two minus two sine theta equal to zero, I would get that that happens at pi over two, which means when I hit pi over two, my radius is zero. So if I keep going, it's still just being defined by the blue graph until I get to pi. So that green region is going to be the definite integral starting at zero and going to pi, but it only involves the blue graph, which was two minus two sine theta. And then if I kept sweeping out the angles, starting at pi and moving onward, now when I look at stuff that's defined in the region, it's all defined by the black circle up until I get to 2 pi. So the rest of that area would be 1 half the definite integral from 0 to pi of 2 squared with respect to theta. So just keep in mind, area between two curves doesn't mean you're always taking an area of one and subtracting the area of the other. It all depends on how the area is swept out. So now we're going to look at problem number three. So again, they want the area that's common between the two. So the common to the two would be this area that's right in here. And then we're gonna start looking at the sweeping. So when I look at the sweeping, if I start at zero, let me get my pencil switch back over here, and I'm looking at the area inside the graph, If I started with an angle of zero, just to sort of picture what's going on, if I plug zero into six, negative six cosine of theta, I would get negative six. So when I'm at angle zero, I'm out here. That's not in the region I'm looking for, right? If I plugged in zero into the blue graph, I would get two minus two, which is zero, that's here. So if I started sweeping out angles to start with from zero, we would be just inside the blue graph, right? Until we get to pi over 2. Now as soon as we hit pi over 2, what would happen is we would start having to pass through the circle before we could get to the blue graph. So that means that past pi over 2, we are now inside the circle. And we stay with just the circle until we hit this intersection point, which I'll calculate in a minute. Now, once we get past that intersection point, if we keep sweeping, we're now going to be inside just the blue graph. And that's going to keep going onward and onward until I hit this intersection point right here. And then in order to sweep the rest of it out, I'd have to pick up from that intersection point and go until I hit the origin again. So basically, I don't care about this little green spot here that's not in my region, but I do care about the red, the blue, and the purple. So I'm gonna pause and calculate those intersection points on my calculator, and there they are. So now I'm ready to actually go ahead and set up my integrals. So my red integral, one half inside my circle, and that's gonna go, we said that started at pi over two, and we'll go to my intersection value of A. My blue graph is gonna start at A and run to B, and it's gonna be inside the two minus two cosine theta. And then my purple area is gonna be, oops, starting at B and running to two pi of my original. Now, here's the thing. That purple area and the red area are actually the same. You can sort of see that. 
Um, if you wanted to, you could simply find the area of the red and multiply it by two instead of having to write the purple as a separate one. So these are things where the area is between two curves, but it doesn't involve subtracting anything. So let's look at some examples where you have to subtract some. So let's look at this example. Now, again, I'm going to go ahead and think about what the intersection points would be. Now, the intersection between 1 and 1 minus cosine theta would happen when cosine theta equals 0. And that happens when theta is pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, right? Which makes sense because that's kind of what it looks like in the picture. Now, here's the thing, though. If I started sweeping at pi over 2, which is pointing straight up, and then started sweeping towards 3 pi over 2, I'm not sweeping the area that I actually have shaded, right? I'm sweeping this area over here, which doesn't is not part of what I want. So instead of starting at pi over 2 and running to 3 pi over 2, I have options. What I might want to do is start at an angle equivalent to 3 pi over 2. That will, when I sweep forward, it will take me to pi over 2. So maybe I want to start at negative pi over 2 and sweep my way over to pi over 2. Your other option is you could start at 3 pi over 2, but you need to make your ending angle something that is coterminal with pi over 2, but bigger, so 5 pi over 2. I'm going to use negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 for my intersection points. Now, rewrite that. Now, when I start to sweep this out, I want you to notice what happens. When I draw my lines, immediately, what I'm sweeping out to get to the circle, I have to pass through both of the functions to get into the region, right? So I'm passing through the blue one and then getting to the black one. And that happens all the way around. So this is an example of what I want is that black region, that half circle, and I want to take away the area inside the blue, which is what I've colored here in red. This is taking an area of an outside function and subtracting an inside function. So when I write this, I'm going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Both of those integrals, if I wrote them separately, would have one halves on them, and I would be squaring each one of them. So I'm going to put them together into one integral. And what I want is this. I want the outer graph, which in this case is r equals 1, squared, minus the inner graph, which in this case is 1 minus cosine theta, squared. And that would give me the area between the two curves. So literally, when I'm sweeping out the area here, my sweeping bars, my arms, basically have to pass through both functions to get into the region. So that means that this is actually going to be the area of one minus the area of another. So I'm going to do another example with you so you can see that, and then we'll be done. All right, so this is example number eight. And so we're asked to find the um, area outside 3 plus 2 sine theta and inside r equals 2. So that's this area right down here. Okay, so again, we're going to think about sweeping, but before we start sweeping, we need to find the intersection points between these two, because you can tell those are going to be important. So I'll pause the video and do that on my calculator. Actually, I can do that without my calculator. So 2 equals 3 plus 2 sine theta, so that means I want where sine is negative one-half, and sine is negative one-half at seven pi over six, and at 11 pi over six. So here's seven pi over six, here's 11 pi over six. Now, when I start sweeping, again, I want to start at a smaller angle and sweep forward. So when I start sweeping, seven pi over six, immediately, in order to get to the shaded area, I'm having to hit both graphs. So you can see that each bar is going to start hitting the area with the 
3 plus 2 sine theta and stop hitting the area when it hits the circle, which is r equals 2. So this is another one where we're actually going to subtract the areas. So we have 1 half. We're going from 7 pi over 6 to 11 pi over 6. And then we're going to do the outer function, the one that's farther from the pole, minus the inner function. And you would plug that into your calculator and calculate it. Now, if you need a little more practice with this, you can always go to Khan Academy and look at the problems there. There are some pretty good problems to try out.